Coming up, keeping his flock in line with the border collie eye. Facing demons on the night shift, this German Shepherd is back on the beat. And this lucky dog learns to surf with dolphins. Romantic poet William Wordsworth immortalized the rugged beauty of the Lake District, home to many flocks of sheep and sheepdogs. Derek Scrimger knows sheepdogs. He works with them all day, every day, and on his days off, he enters them in sheep trials. Derek has never known a dog quite like Ben. Hello, no. Hello. The thing that makes Ben fairly unique is that he's honesty. He's absolutely honest and trustworthy in every way. When you do your work on the farm with him, he tries his heart out to please you and do his work. And he's got a lot of courage and stamina and intelligence. Everything, really, that, that I want in a dog. Ben's won three major sheep trials, but he's never qualified for the English team. Next month's trial could be seven-year-old Ben's last chance to qualify for the National Sheepdog Championship. As he's got older, especially this year, he's developed a sore shoulder. And I took him to the vet and they found he's got arthritis in his uh, left shoulder. And that's a disaster because he won't be able to do the rest of his work in the farm. It's definitely the last year for work in the fells. And he's in pain, which is, re is really sort of upsetting. Uh, so I've got to be really careful. But uh, from competition, my big hopes for Ben were to run him at the National. And this year there's a World Championship as well. And Ben should have been at his best. This could be the last year for competitions. Because one thing is, I won't be able to train him as hard as I normally would for a competition. So uh, I'm going to have to lay off him a little bit and just rely on his natural ability and to use his brains. Ben, you have a sore shoulder, have you? Hmm? Is that sore? Does that hurt? Eh? You've been working hard. Hey! Derek got Ben when he was three years old. Four previous owners couldn't handle Ben's excessive enthusiasm. Dogs are like people, like they have all different temperaments, and some dogs are sneaky. There's other dogs that like to bite sheep and they look for every opportunity to bite them. Well, these dogs are no good to us. Because Ben, he wants to move sheep, he's got the authority, he wants to be in control, but he never wants to be unkind to anything. So he, he will bite a sheep, but only as a last resort in self-defense or in an effort to move it. Come on there, come on, come by, come by. He tends to know the difference between a sheep that's slow because it's ill and one that's defiant. And a sheep that's slow and ill, he gives it lots of time. Whereas a sheep that's defiant, he'll step right up and confront it and show his authority. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Get up. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Get up. Come on. Shaha. Come on. Ha. -ha. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. Come on, Ben. Get up. Ben herds by using an intense stare. This border collie trait, coupled with a predatory posture, gets the message across without bites or barks. Ben! Come on, Ben! There's actually four commands that we use, four basic commands for working the sheep. The first one is go left, which is the traditional command for that is come by. Come by. Lie down. Come by. Lie down. The other one is go to the right. The traditional command for that is away. Keep away, lie down. Keep away, lie down. To move straight onto the sheep is walk on or get up. And uh, that'll do to call them back off the sheep. I'll do bed. I'll do bed. You've got to be careful in the way that you give the dog the commands. If you give the commands in a harsh, quick way, that's the type of movement you'll get from the dog. 
But if you give the command in a nice, gentle way, then the dog learns to associate that with a nice move. So what you ask for is what you get. Good, good, good lad. That's the stuff. Steady now, lie down. Lie down, that'll do. Now lie down, that'll do. That'll do. I think this could be Ben's last chance to do anything major in competition, just because of his arthritis. I think the shoulder could affect him, and if he gets difficult shape, no matter how good the handling dog is, you know, they don't have a chance. It's the English National Sheepdog Trials. There are 150 contenders, but only 15 dogs will be winners. Will Ben be among them? Well, I'm feeling a little bit nervous just now. I've already watched some big names fall by the wayside, and uh, Ben's a dog that gets nervous. If he realizes I'm nervous, he gets nervous, so I've shut him away in the car. Before I go to get him out, I have to get myself under control and get a clear head and a clear, clear brain so I don't sort of pass it on to Ben when I take him out. Planes in her day to day work. But there we go. Number 30 next in the programme. Derek Scrimger. Derek Scrimger with his seven year old uh, Ben. One of the things that worries me today is Ben, he's been drawn in the middle of the day. And it's a warm day and uh, it could affect his stamina. Come by. Good lad. Ben, lay down. Good boy. Come on, Ben. Shh, come up, Ben. Walk on. Walk on, Ben. Lie down. In the course, Ben has to fetch, drive, and separate the sheep. Come in here, Ben. I'll do this, this. Watch it. Good last. Good. Lie down. Penning the sheep is the biggest challenge for Ben. The sheep are stubborn. Lie down. Lie down. It's not easy. Away. Lie down. Keep away. Lie down. Ben finally Lie. herds them into the pen. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Keep out. Well, a completed course there for penalty number 30, Derek Scringer from Keswick in Cumbria. It went. Uh, better than I'd planned, really, so I'm really, really pleased. The judges tally the scores. Derek and his family examine the results. Ben's performance rates in the top 15. This qualifies Ben for the World Championships. For Ben and Derek, making it to the World Championships is bittersweet. It's a little bit sad because Ben, with his shoulder problem, this could be his last trial and he's coming up to his best years, really, and he's not going to have those. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Even when he's too old to work or compete, Ben will be at Derek's side. He's the first working dog on Derek's farm who'll make the transition to family pet. I knew when I saw Ben that he had a lot of talent, and I've got a huge admiration for him, and I regard him as a sort of character if dogs were the equivalent to people, I know Ben would be sort of cleverer than I am. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I've got lots of admiration for him. He's a special dog. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. South Seattle Police and Fire 19. Yeah, I need um, uh, the police. Frank Sector, family disturbance with a gun and a knife involved. Any other Frank? A year and a half ago, 
Officer Mike Meter and Jonah responded to a routine call. Jonah was hit. Prior to um, him getting shot, um, I thought that he was invincible and that <laughs> he can do uh, almost anything. And after the night that he was shot, I, I just realized that he was uh, um, vulnerable and, and is uh, very lucky to be alive today. He could easily lose his life in his job. It was a very emotional time. After the shooting, Jonah and Mike needed some time to recuperate. A dog that uh, I grew up with, or he grew up with me, or raised him and trained him. Uh, and shortly after entering canine service, I was going to lose this dog to, uh, to a gunshot wound. So he's, in a sense, two different dogs. Uh, when, uh, uh, when he gets in the car, he knows it's business time. And when he comes home, he, he gets excited coming home, too, because he sees the other two dogs, and uh, he gets to eat, and uh, <laughs> then uh, lays around the house and relaxes till he has to do it again the next day. As members of the Seattle Police Department's canine unit, the night of the shooting haunts Jonah and Mike every time they go to work. I'm just more protective of him, uh, just a little bit more cautious of what uh, uh, I use him for. I rely on him and he relies on me to uh, watch each other's back, so to speak. At the station, Jonah meets up with his canine colleagues. German Shepherds make excellent police dogs because they're strong, smart, and highly trainable. Every shift starts with obedience training. John Emmerich is Jonah's evening supervisor. The dog's attitude, he's got, uh, he's got a wonderful personality, he's got high drive for the work, he's good with kids and people, family. Mike reflects on Jonah's behavior since he was shot. I think he changed and became a lot more excitable. <laughs> Not that we really need it. He uh, barks a lot, barks at everything, almost doesn't shut up, and uh, that's uh, what he's known for, just always talking, barking at everybody. His supervisor agrees. Uh, Jonah's a very high-strung dog, high-energy dog, and he's got a wonderful attitude, unless you're a bad guy. You don't want to be on the tail end of, of uh, Jonah. Police dogs train constantly. In this tracking exercise, Jonah has to locate a hiding suspect. Training prepares the dogs for challenges they'll meet on the street. Like a fleeing suspect. Attaboy. Attaboy, take him, but nothing could have prepared Jonah for that Attaboy, fateful feel. night. Attaboy. Well, on the night of the incident, uh, it was Jonah and Mai's uh, Friday night. We were working in West Seattle when a report of a domestic disturbance came out over uh, radio. So we headed over in the hopes of maybe having a suspect fleeing on foot. When we arrived on the scene, the suspect ran in front of our car and into the construction site. Pulled Jonah out of the car and uh, yelled at the suspect to stop or I'll send my dog. Jonah ran into the construction site with myself and another officer behind him. Suspect stopped and turned around and indicated that he was giving up. I ordered Jonah in a down position in front of the suspect and Jonah complied. We ordered the suspect to the ground. Instead of going to the ground, he reached into his pocket, pulled out a gun, and began to fire at us. And uh, Jonah was hit, hit in the head. I can remember him yelping, and uh, I, I lost sight of him after that, afterwards. My biggest fear at that point was, we were in a construction site, it was kind of muddy, and uh, my biggest fear was finding him lying in, a, in an actual puddle of water or mud, lying dead. 
Dr. Don Canfield, the canine center vet, explains Jonah's injury. He's a good boy. This is where his staples were, right along in here, where the scar is. So the bullet penetrated here, hitting the skull, glancing off the skull, and exiting the skull right here. As you can appreciate, a few millimeters this way, he would have lost his eye. If the bullet had been three or four millimeters back or down, the bullet would have impacted into his skull and killed him. The fact that the bullet transversed these vital areas and bounced out was truly miraculous. When I first saw him, I was relieved, and then uh, then I saw this uh, gaping wound over his head, and then you know, the, just the fear came right back. Oh no, he's he's got a head wound. Those are the worst. Even after six weeks of recovery, no one knew if Jonah would be able to work again. He had to be tested to see if the accident had made him gun shy. A police dog afraid of gunfire can no longer work as a police dog. Jonah responded with his usual excited barking. He was fine. The reason that, that this didn't frighten Jonah is he's been exposed to gunfire in his early life and during his training. He's used to this It's part of his job, part of his work environment. Jonah and Mike finally got the official okay to go back to work. Despite the trauma of the shooting, they're back on the beat. How close was Jonah yeah. Jonah and I do have a special bond. I raised him with my family along with a couple other dogs. And uh, it's just that the devotion that we spend time with each other and uh, spend taking care of him. And he, in his own mind, thinks that he takes care of me. Kaloa, Hawaii, tucked away in a natural lagoon, is the Dolphin Quest Resort, where guests come for hands-on learning with dolphins. Kobe is one of the resort's star employees. He loves the dolphins and recently started performing with a new partner, Kaloi. They need more practice to be ready for tomorrow's demo. Kobe's owner is Andrew Scullion. Dolphin Quest is a marine mammal learning center. Here's a little anatomy lesson, OK? You guys see that little dot? At Dolphin Quest, children, adults, and school groups learn about dolphins through interactive programs. Kobe's favorite job may be performing with the dolphins, but he also carries gear and helps feed them. Every chance he gets, he tries to sneak into the water to play with them. He'll only be allowed to later as a reward for helping with the animal training adventure. The activity introduces people to the basics of animal training. All training is reward-based. Kobe knows that if he listens and responds to the guest's commands, he'll get to play with the dolphins. Is it a good boy? Very nice. Boy. They get to do hands-on with Kobe and see how some of the behavioral theory we apply to the dolphins works with any animal, including dogs. We brought him outside just for fun to see how the dolphins, as well as Kobe, would react. And he seemed to have a knack with him. He was very gentle with the dolphins, and the dolphins seemed very gentle with him. The dolphins seemed to enjoy it. Kobe did. Hi. Hi. When Kobe is in the water, he's always closely supervised. Direct contact could be dangerous for both the dolphins and Kobe. The dolphins, you know, just like any animal, um, they have minds of their own and they're unpredictable. So when we do go out there, there is a, a tinge of uh, danger involved. You have a 400 to 500 pound animal with Kobe only weighing 65 pounds. Not only that, Kobe has sharp claws. The animal's skin is very, very sensitive and smooth. Um, we don't want the claws to get near the dolphin or the dolphin's tail to get near Kobe. Safety is our top priority for all the animals. Kobe is learning to let a dolphin push him on a surfboard. He practices with Andrew first. Tomorrow, he'll demonstrate it for the guests. The trainer preps Kaloe, a dolphin who hasn't done this trick with Kobe before. She'll take some getting used to, since she'll push him at a different speed and strength than his old partner. Stay there. 
we need to work on his surfboard ride a little bit, get his balance a little bit more and uh, a little bit more control on uh, his part on the board. But when Andrew's not there, Kobe gets distracted by Kaloe. Last time uh, he got a foot push around by himself and he stood up, turned around and started licking the dolphin's face as he was pushing him. And of course that made me a little nervous. Um, we want him to stay sitting down on the, on the surfboard this time, so we're gonna be working on that today. Andrew found Kobe five years ago in Tampa, Florida. We were just driving along the road and uh, we saw two little puppies on the side of the road. So of course we stopped and picked them up and they're both just real tiny things. And I kept Kobe and in front of mine kept his brother, Charlie, who's still in Florida. And uh, we've been together ever since. Kobe is part Labrador and part pit bull. Labs love to swim and play, while pit bull terriers are strong and determined, an excellent combination for this dolphin performer. Well, his personality is a lot like a Labrador. He's, uh, he's clumsy, fun, very playful, very obedient, but also as a pit bull, he's very fast uh, and uh, very intelligent. Today is Kobe's surfboarding demo. When Kaloe pushes him, he has to keep his balance and face forward. But Kobe succumbs to temptation. Kobe is a sweet dog. He's, he's so obedient, but he just can't control himself around the dolphins. Kobe's trick needs more practice, but the guests were charmed. Yeah. It was so cute. The dog actually kissed the dolphin on the lips, and I didn't know dolphins had lips. <laughs> a lot of the people at work want to adopt him. He's the sweetest dog I know. He's just so obedient and, and so humble and just great to be around. I think we're inseparable. He's like my best friend, and uh, I don't go far without him. <laughs> <laughs> 